My name is Daniel Mesco, and this is my <laughs> benzene molecule program. So uh, I guess I'll start at the top. At the top we have uh, just my imports. I imported the java.awt class. I did all of it, uh, but I'm only going to use the graphics anyway, but for safety I brought all of it and the applet so that I can print out in the applet. Mm -hmm. And then in my public class I just defined some variables and some fonts that don't come into play until at the end, uh, towards the end of the code, but right. I wanted to make sure I got them out of the way uh, when I remembered them. So I just, when at the end it's going to say benzene, and it's going to say um, you know, the black atoms are carbon, the gray are hydrogen, and then the, since there's a special rule, a rule with uh, benzene, I, I wrote that in as well to clarify. And then I created two different types of fonts for the variables, um, which I'll, I'll show you once I run it. Should I run it first maybe? Or, uh, or should I yeah, run, run it. it. Let's take a look at it and then go back to the code and explain what you did. Okay, I'll do that. I'll erase these. Then. There we go. Okay. Little lag. Yeah, a little bit. Compile and then run. So there it is. Very nice. Very um, nice. Looks very really nice. Thank you. That's, that's benzene. And then at the bottom here I have uh, written that the, the black atoms are carbon, the gray atoms are hydrogen, and that all the bonds between these black uh, carbon atoms are, are delocated electron bonds, which benzene's a special case because the bond lengths are not long enough to be double bonds, but not short enough to be single bonds. So ah. they call them, they, the, the, the electrons are called delocated because they wow. don't specifically share or not share. They, 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 they'll, um, they, go bo they go for either atom, so they... they uh, they call them delocated electron bonds. Uh, FYI, folks, uh, benzene plays a crucial role in radiocarbon dating. Uh, the amount of beta particles that uh, benzene gives off in a machine called a liquid scintillating analyzer is uh, proportional to the age of whatever it is that you are trying to date. Mm -hmm. So the more, it's inversely proportional, which means that the more beta particles uh, the benzene gives off the newer, the, or the the more recent, the the age of. So the, uh, so back to the code. Then I'll show you how it uh, how how I did that, uh -huh. and I'll move this along to the side here so that I can keep it there. Uh, so I started right off with the paint, the the, uh, the paint void, and uh, I, I, I define all of it at the beginning, but the, towards as it goes down, a lot of it's repeated just with different parameters. So I didn't really define it in, in comments here, but. Yeah. Uh, I set the first color to gray because I started, I went in a counterclockwise motion. So I started with this circle up here first. Mm -hmm. So I set the color to gray. There's a, the preset color in, in uh, the applet. And then I filled an oval uh, at these dimensions. So I found a dimension that was sort of centered in my applet to make sure that I had enough space for the whole atom. Mm -hmm. And then I set the color to black and I did uh, a line, which is this line here in black. So here that's what Explain the four parameters there for draw line. For draw line, the first the first parameter is an x coordinate, and the second is a y, and the third is a different x coordinate, a different y coordinate, um, so that you can show the first point of the line and the second point of the line, mm -hmm. and then it'll connect the, the, those two points. So 220 and 55 is the top point. So you, you go over to oh, whoops, you go over 220 mm -hmm. and down 55. Right. Well, you, yeah, you understand. And then the next one is also 220 on the x because it's a vertical line. But it's 80, so it's down 30 pixels from the original point here down to here. Uh -huh. So that's that's what the two parameters are. Now we fill over the parameters are a little different. The first one is an X there, and the second one is the Y. But the X starts on the corner here, and the Y is up there. Mm -hmm. And then the 40 and the 40 are the um, minor and major axis dimensions. So technically it's an oval. Right. But since I made those um, lengths the same number of pixels, it makes a circle. So right. There's no fill circle function. Uh -huh. So if I had made this 4050, you would have seen an oval that, that stretches uh, exactly. uh, longer. So that's why um, it's a circle because they're the same, they're the same uh, dimensions. So yeah, makes sense. So that yeah, that's the oval function and the line function. Then I did it again here with uh, the first black circle. So I filled the oval there, and now this line is the first line that's not straight. So with these lines, it was very difficult because you had to find the right way of curving it. So I did this atom here and then this line here. And finding the right, you know, sometimes you want to start from the center of the circle and then go to not the center of the circle. So it's a lot of, it's a big, the, the whole process is trial and error. Because, uh, you know, you, you see what it is and you see, oh, I, I went over too far, or I went left too far, what whatnot. Because right. it's hard to get a visual of uh, what you're graphing until you see it graphed. Right. So, or you see it, you know, printed out. 
So then uh, I did that again all the way down, and I, I labeled this the second black oval, which would be right here, and the second gray, and the third all the way down, and the colors change gray, black. All, this, all the ovals are circles, so they're all the same, but the dimensions are changed on the lines, uh, especially for these curved ones here. These were difficult because I, I, on a lot of them you'll see that the line starts in the center point of the circle, which is easy because I knew I just had to go down 20 which is half of the, the 40 uh, radius of this, or the 40 diameter. Um, but for these, I didn't start at the center point of the circle, because that would have been down here. So I had to fiddle around with it, and extend the lengths to make sure there were no empty spaces. But uh, after a lot of testing it out, it, uh, it, I, I was able to make it work. So it, it, it looks like a short segment of code here in the paint void, but it took a while to um, figure out. actually make it compile properly. Yeah, yeah exactly, because it, there were lots of little, you know, line issues. They, it, not necessarily that there was a problem in the syntax, everything was written properly, but the lines were in the wrong place and it wasn't representing a benzene atom. Right. And then at the end is where I call in the um, variables that I defined at the top and the fonts. So this is the last gray oval at the top right, and then I start with um, the word benzene. So I, start, I establish the color as red because I wanted it to be standing out from the rest. I set the font to big. Which actually, now that, I, now that it's important, I'll go back up to the fonts so we can look at what I used for those. Um, I created two fonts, one for the, the name Benzene and the other ones for the little uh, extra notes. Font big uh, is just big as the name I used to help me, big and small, to help define one and the other. Um, and I used Arial for both of them because it was a pretty uh, standard uh, text. Zero means that I'm not using italics, I'm not using bold, I'm not using any special things. Uh, so it's just plain text, and then the, the 15 and the 20 is the size. So I made big a larger size than the um, small. And the, and the, the sizes are relatively uh, similar to what you would see in Microsoft Word, like a 12 point or a, a 15 or 20. So I, I, uh, I use some pretty big sizes um, for, the, for the name Benzene, and then, and then the little small notes on the bottom I used, uh, the small one. So I set, the, I set the color to red here, which I can now use my red pen. And I set the font to big, and then I uh, created. I, I said to draw the string benzene, and the string benzene is just says benzene, uh, and I put these parameters just by um, uh, typing in numbers that seem closer to the center of where I started, and then I you know messed with them just by a couple of uh, pixels to find out where it lined up pretty evenly with the uh, with the atom, and then I created black for the other for the rest of the. Uh, words for the names for the for the description of the bonds and, and uh, the atoms and uh, makeup and makeup two those are um, makeup and makeup two are the the ones that say that uh, the black atoms are carbon and the and the, and the gray are hydrogen mm -hmm. so makeup is black atoms carbon makeup two gray atoms hydrogen and then carbon bonds is the delocated electron bond so then you go back down and I set the font there to small so that it could be, because it was a long sentence, and I, and I tried using a big font, but it, it was too large for the, for the applet. So I made it smaller, and then I printed that out below. And each one is, um, there's five, five pixels below the last one. So on, on the um, Y value. So then you go back to the applet, and you can see how it looks. There's the benzene in red, and the, um, the carbon and the hydrogen bond descriptions, what I call makeup. And then there's the last line there about the delocated yeah, bond. Yeah, looks, looks very good, Daniel. Thank you. Um, question about your code. Mm -hmm. I noticed there's a lot of methods um, from the graphics that's constantly being used over and over again. Is it possible for you to create a method that would actually do a lot of what you're kind of repeating over and over again? Is it possible for you, for example, to create a method called hydrogen that has certain parameters where it'll actually draw a hydrogen atom in a certain location in your atom? Oh, I see. So, so, I, so I won't have to keep defining the parameters every time. I could just, exactly. I could just call upon it. That, you, you, I think I might actually be able to do that. I just when I was. I mean, at this, at this point, obviously, I, I wasn't looking for that at this point. Yeah, but, yeah, sure. But something for you to consider in the future when we get into methods in Java. Mm -hmm. How, and how they can automate a lot of things that um, would is now repetitive in, in code. Yeah, yeah, I could call upon a hydrogen 
uh, method. I wouldn't have to write fill oval of a 40 and 40. Uh, it radius. would automatically, you just call upon hydrogen, yeah, and, and it automatically it create an oval that's gray, and uh, with the other parameters that you put in the method, it'll actually put it um, in the upper left or the upper right or at the bottom of your molecule or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just making sure I, I went step by step to make sure everything was in line. Oh, of course, yeah, of course. Uh, questions, comments? I have Foster? A comment. Um, I mean, even before you, um, you, you wanted to create a method for each um, individual shape, right. to make your code a little bit simpler, you could also, for the, um, when you set the color, the program actually just retains that color throughout the program. So um, if you just shift a few of them around, you could actually just save a bunch of lines of code by writing like, yeah, you know, you're right. I color could, black, and then you just put all the... Um, and all the black ones. That anything that's black would follow yeah, right, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. A good, that's a good... That's just a good just to make it, um, you know, just to save you a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. Um, writing or copy and pasting. I didn't think of that, because I, when I was making it, I, I was thinking strictly in this, you know, uh, format of going from one to the next in a counterclockwise motion because when you're dealing with a lot of these, you know, when I looked at that, oh, some line is wrong, I wanted to make sure I knew which line was wrong mm -hmm. because, you know, when you're looking at these, these uh, a long code like this, it's hard to tell. That's why I put these comments here, the fourth gray and the fifth black, so I could tell which one was which because uh, when you're doing so many uh, at a time, if one line is wrong, you might not know which draw line function is the one that's messed up. Right. But that's a good idea because that way I wouldn't have to keep going black, gray, black, gray, black, which is what I ended up doing. Yeah, that would have saved a lot of uh, a few lines of code there. Another thing that you may want to consider doing, and again, this is for future reference, is animating that molecule. <laughs> uh, one of the nice things about Java is that, you know, in an applet, you'll be able to uh, introduce dynamic uh, uh, elements that way. So, um, for future reference, folks, we want to take something like this and, you know, maybe show how it looks. Um, when you rotate it uh, around the z-axis, for example. You know, not every molecule looks the same front, back, sideways, right? Bird's eye view. I mean, it, it, there are certain molecules that actually look different um, depending on how they're rotated. Um, so, something for you to consider, okay? Is that an object? That, so, like, how, how about the animation? Uh, it, well, it involves refreshing the, the oh. apple. And then every time you refresh it, you get a slightly different um, composition. Um, it's kind of like Jerry. Um, uh, you know how people used to make cartoons? They used yeah, to have all cells. 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 What are they called? Cells. Cells. Yeah, cells. Yeah. Yeah. Motion animation. Right. So uh, think, think of think of the way an animated GIF is created. Yeah, yeah. A bunch of static pictures, Piece but then game. right, and then layered, and then you just instruct. Um, the browser to refresh yeah. and then it, it shows different different pictures, right? Okay. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Daniel, thank you very much. Thank you. I will.